Starlink satellite internet is available in the Philippines with nationwide coverage. What kind of speeds can you expect to see? Well, they say up to 200 megabit per second, but I've seen as high as 280 megabit per second. Now, there's a lot of questions about Starlink. Firstly, how does it work? Well, you order online, you receive your kit via DHL, Starlink will handle any customs duties, any NTC permits, they handle everything for you. So you receive your kit, this is the Wi-Fi router that goes inside your home, and then the dish, the satellite dish, will go outside. You can just place it on any surface as long as it can see the sky. Now optionally, you can buy a mount to connect it to the side of your home, it's really up to you. A lot of people said to me, why would I spend money on Starlink? when I can get Converge or PLDT or Globe Fiber. Well, Starlink is not for you. Starlink is for those people living in far-flung rural places where they cannot get wired internet. You remember during the pandemic, we saw photos of teachers on top of school buildings like this with their cell phone, just trying to get one bar of signal so that they can download the modules. That's who Starlink is designed for. Those places that don't have wide internet, they can barely get a cell phone signal. You put a satellite dish there, suddenly they have super high speed internet and it's a lot more affordable than other options. How much does it cost? Well, it's an investment. The kit of the router, the wires and the dish, you're looking at around 30,000 pesos. Then per month, the price is 2,700 pesos for the service, for the subscription. You might say, hey, that sounds super expensive. Let me tell you about the alternative if you live in one of those far-flung places. Signal Connect. You've heard of Signal TV, satellite TV. They also have an internet service. You know how much it costs? Their kit with Signal is 35,000 pesos. Installation, 6,000 pesos. And every 20 gigabytes of data you use, that's another 6,000 pesos. So for someone like me, who uses between 15 and 20 gigabytes per day, I would pay Signal 180,000 pesos per month. That's a lot of money compared to Starlink, where I pay 2,700 per month and I can use as much data as I want. So if you're going to say Starlink is expensive, you have to compare it against competing products, satellite, internet. You cannot compare it against fiber inside a big city because this is not designed for people living inside big cities. You already have a lot of options. It's fiber, DSL, 3G, 4G, 5G. You don't need Starlink. Starlink is not for you. Even right now, the government is spending millions of pesos on satellite internet. Starlink will drastically reduce their costs. And this is better, it's cheaper, it's faster, it's more reliable, it's easy to set up. With traditional satellite, you need a professional installation because it has to be pointing directly. With Starlink, the dish moves itself and points itself at the satellite. You don't have to be a professional to install Starlink. Another thing with traditional satellite internet is they only have one satellite. Starlink have thousands of satellites in a low Earth orbit. What's the benefit of that? Well, if one satellite is having a problem, your dish can just redirect itself. How can you do that with a traditional satellite internet, which relies on one single satellite? The other thing is Starlink. Look at the speed. We had over 200 down, over 20 up. Compare that to Signal, then we give you up to 15 Mbps on the download. What's the upload? I don't know, but I'm guessing it's gonna be limited also. So Starlink faster, cheaper, more reliable because I have so many satellites. So I hope people can understand because there's a lot of people commenting saying, I won't buy that, it's a waste of money, it's not worth it. It's not worth it for you because you live in a big city. You can get a wide connection. If you live in the middle of nowhere and you cannot get any internet, suddenly this is very appealing. I won't be surprised if some people share this between their neighbors or for example the government can sign a contract with Starlink to put this in barangays, in public libraries, in public schools. In fact DICT have spent how many hundreds of millions or maybe billions of pesos on the free Wi-Fi for all project and they're also using satellite internet. Now they have a cheaper option. So don't be so quick to dismiss this and say it's not worth it. It might not be worth it for you, but for other people, it's worth it. Now myself, why did I buy it? As I explained in previous videos, 
I want this so that I can respond to disasters, calamities, relief, uh, outreach, things like that. So it's not really for me because I already have lots of internet options here in Metro Manila. I want to use this for other people, to help other people. When I previously mentioned using this for those purposes, people said, how are you going to power the Starlink if the grid is down, if there's no power? And I showed that there are various options, for example, running it from a generator, which could be gasoline or diesel, running it from some kind of solar setup. But let's take a closer look at how much power does the Starlink actually use and start to address some of those technical questions. So let's plug the Starlink into our power meter. What we're expecting is to see a low initial reading and then we should see it spike up as it moves the satellite dish outside. So this is what you're looking at, around 11 watts so far. We're probably going to see that jump anywhere between 80 to 100 watts once the dish starts moving. According to the Starlink application, it's searching for a satellite. Once it's found that satellite, I'm expecting that we're going to see a much lower power draw. And there you go, just a couple of minutes and we're already online. And if we check our power meter, it looks like it has dropped down significantly, somewhere around 40 watts. So in a previous video, I showed how we powered the Starlink with a solar setup using an inverter. Because the thing to remember is the Starlink takes AC. There is a way to run it from DC, but it's a little bit complicated and you have to buy your own equipment. So typically you're going to use an inverter like this with your solar setup. This one, of course, is from CDR King, number one. Simply plug this into your cigarette lighter socket in your car. It will convert DC to AC and we can plug our Starlink into this. Since so, we're inside, I would just use this battery in place of a car and I would clamp the wires from the inverter onto this. You can probably hear the fan of our inverter running right now. Let's connect the Starlink. There we go. Let's check if the light came on underneath. We have our white status light. So. Let's just wait for it to boot up. Right now it's just running from this tiny little battery. Of course you could use a large deep cycle battery or even lithium, this is actually lithium. And you could use that as your backup power solution for your Starlink. There's so many options that you can explore. You can see the application says that our Starlink is booting and now it's searching. And then once it gets connected we'll do a speed test. Of course, you don't have to use a cell phone. You could use a laptop, desktop, computer. In fact, that's a common question. People say, how many devices can connect to this? Well, this Wi-Fi router supports up to 128 devices. So you can actually connect quite a lot of devices. Our inverter is not getting warm yet. This is a 300 watt inverter. So I'm pretty confident that it can handle the Starlink without any problem. So it says we're offline, but any moment, there you go, we're online. It is a little bit slower than earlier, but what I found is that usually you have to leave the Starlink for 10 or 15 minutes before you get the best speed. In fact, you can see the warning there. It says your Starlink just powered on. Network performance should stabilize after about 15 minutes. It's been around 10 minutes, so let's go ahead and do another speed test. I'm expecting to see much better results now. Yeah, there you go. See, once you give it time to stabilize, you get much better results. Now, some people have asked, how about power banks, which not only have USB, but also have an AC outlet. For example, this one from RAV Power. I'm sorry it looks so disgusting. This has that kind of rubber that goes bad after a few years. So it's sticky and icky and whatever. Anyway, it says up to 100 watts output. So let's connect our Starlink and see if it works. Okay, let's check underneath. We have our white status light has come on. We'll just give it a few minutes to boot up. Okay, it just swapped to offline and then it should say online and then we should be able to do our speed test. There you go. Again, we're expecting slightly slower speeds because it's only just turned on. But let's see what we can get. Let me frame it up on the camera. Sorry, I'm doing this handheld. Well, there you go. Immediately, we're getting very high speeds. And remember, that's running from the power bank right now. How's our upload going to be? Uh, still a little bit low, but not too bad. One of the things I want to make clear is that this power bank cannot run forever. 
if we're drawing 40 or 50 watts continuously it's going to drain down so you're still going to want to consider something like a solar setup or a generator or even your car if you're lucky enough to have one you cannot rely solely on a small battery like this and expect it to last forever i just want to make that very clear so that was a relatively short video but i think it will answer a lot of the questions that people had actually one of the things i keep seeing is oh the philippine government won't allow that because it's going to compete with the existing telcos and they don't want that and blah 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 i think they don't realize that the previous president de gong fast-tracked starlink into the philippines the current president bbm also helped to fast-track starlink into the philippines why would they try and take action against Starlink when they actively work to bring it into the country? Not just them, also the lawmakers and various other groups behind the scenes work hard to bring Starlink to the Philippines because it will help the Filipino people. This serves a serious need. Just imagine what DEPED, what DICT can do with this, even offices of civil defense. Imagine what they can do with Starlink. So for those people saying, oh, the government won't allow that, if, I think you're very confused because if you do your research, you'll know that a lot of effort was made to bring Starlink to the Philippines. And I don't see why they would ever want to kick it out because this is a big game changer for the Philippines. Anyway, if you have any more questions, put it in the comment section and I will try to answer them. Thanks for watching.